Hey up everyone, this is the Yorkshire Panda back on Enigmatica 6 and yeah a named creeper with a lot of health that wasn't very uh, pleasant thing to come around the corner to but uh, yeah I'm going to fill that in later but yeah back again did a little bit of exploring and back at uh, home base um, did quite a lot of exploring actually uh, so this is where we were at last time and then as we we're coming across the air we decided to go down found another couple of these houses dotted about so as you know as you'd expect we just looked at them of all the world of goods this is the ocean so i did manage to get some kelp from the ocean which i'll need later uh came up here through our terracotta uh uh, terracotta terrain here, these terracotta mountains, another village, another village, this one, is it this village, has another one of those uh, underground dungeons, so two now that we've found, so we've got plenty of loot coming from there, another couple of never portals, a uh, new few houses, nothing really of interest here, did take a quick look up here through these mountains, found a lot of gold in these mountains, which was nice and handy but uh, all the way back to here did have a quick look at what these uniform shapes were it's actually buildings underwater not had a proper look but that's quite interesting um, and yeah I was thinking I, I do tend to like nice big open flat areas to build bases in and I do like them next to the water as well and throughout all my exploring I figured the best place to probably build the base is Right about here. <laughs> so, yeah, found a fair bit of loot, so it's not a big loss, but uh, yeah, I think with the water here, this quite large flat area here, a couple of pools of oil, but we can easily get that up. We're going to build the base here. I'm going to centre it around this chunk here. So, what I will be doing um, between this episode and next is marking out the chunk and building a foundation don't know what i'm going to build walls wise but it's just going to be a uh, a basic square to start off with and as we get we progress further and further into the mods uh that's just going to slowly change and upgrade so the, the base will upgrade as we do so it looks boring to begin with but it will get better uh to get a lot of loot got a lot of bricks managed to find a few emeralds got a fair bit more ore managed to get a load of pneumatic craft stuff uh, and let's get our tools back here so what i'm going to do um first thing that i do need to do is get this repaired but one of my uh, favourite items in this pack is feral flare lanterns. It's a lantern that creates a lit up area about 30 odd blocks in diameter. The caveat is it needs that uh, glowstone to build. Now, I don't have anything in the way of glowstone. I think I might have had a single glowstone dust from somewhere but uh, yeah not exactly an item. Yeah there we are. I've got one and I need four to make the one for a lantern and I want to get at least a few of these up. So I need glowstone. Now we could go to the nether to get glowstone. We could also raid these little square shrines here which you know what if i'm venturing out let's get some food um and i'll show you what i mean when i get there and here we are so this is a astral sorcery shrine there are two types of these there are the little square ones you see here and then there are big ones here the big ones you do need later there's a lot of gold on here as well i think uh, the big ones you need later when you get into the mod but the thing about these little shrines under these pillars you have a chance of finding a chest. Now, 
But not bad. Three chests on this one. There can be no chest. There can be four chests, or there can be one, two, or three. Um, it is a little bit of potluck, but this glowstone has aquamarine, some bones, and you find these constellation papers. These are what you need to get started with astral. Now I'll not be doing too much astral yet. Uh, oh, ender pearls, nice. Uh, but effectively you need the first five of these constellations to get started with the pack. Uh, after that you need to advance further to find more constellations. So you don't want to pick up every one of those that you find, you just want to pick up the first uh, five to find those. And then as time goes on and you unlock more constellations you go back to some of these and you pick up uh, any more that you need. There is... I mean, that mountain for mining is going to be wonderful. But there is one other way of getting glowstone. And you can only get it from mountainous biomes. And I haven't seen any while I've been uh, exploring, which is mildly annoying because you can usually get stacks of the stuff. Uh, you know, straight out of the uh, start of the game. But uh, yeah, you can find these little plants that you can only pick up with shears, but if you break them, they drop glowstone. Now it's meant to be so you can get started with astral without having to go to the nether. And normally I raid those for all they're worth. But yeah, as I say, on the Terraforge map, not many, I haven't seen any in the, uh, the biomes that, I, that are around me. I don't know if they just don't go up high enough. I mean, that goes well above 100 blocks. So I think height's the issue. I think it's just the, the biome itself. Which is a shame, because it means we have to do this the hard way. But what I'll do, uh, I'm just going to make my way to another little shrine down here. And then when I get to the big shrine, I'll show you what that's all about. And just found another one of these little nether portals uh, but that is what we're looking at, these big shrines. So you might have seen one in passing as we're exploring but these are your main astral starting points. Now it looks quite normal, nothing special here but if you were to dig into here This is the inside. Now, there are up to a few chests in the corners. A bit more glowstone and some diamond. But that is what you'll need to get started with Astral. We're not going to touch it just yet. Because we don't uh, need it right now. But having a few of these at hand, or knowing where a few of these are, does make Astral a lot easier to start with. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to call into this one astral shrine here, and I'll get back. We'll get these feral lanterns built. And I really should not have gone in the water, because that there is a alligator or a crocodile. I don't know. I don't care to find out. I made one mistake already trying to uh, antagonize the local wildlife. Holy why Crocodile, 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 crocodile. Go away, go away, go away, go away. Go off, get off, get off, get off, get off. Put your sword on, put your sword on. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Did I panic? I think not. I just make my way back. I've got one little shrine to get to there. And just as a side note, another reason to keep my base around here, swamps or marshlands, spawn slimes at night which slime balls can be such a pain to come by early in the game uh, especially if you want to get further into create you need slime for a few things but not too much of a problem as long as I come out at night I can get a bit of slime from here and uh, it's going to make a mess but Only two chests here. And 
how much cluster I've got now. I've got 14. If I get two more in here, I've got enough. Da, ah, too much to wish for. Ah, I've got my five constellations. I've got some ender pearls as well, which is a wonderful, wonderful uh, early find. Save me having to go around killing endermen, but uh, yeah. Just near that village now, so just cut across the lake. Back in a mo when I'm back home and I've slept, and we can get started with what we need to do. Uh, is that glow still down there? Okay, maybe checking out this cave first of all, because I've never seen that. That is a. Well, let's have a look, shall we? It is. It's an. <laughs> wow. This is an interesting biome. <laughs> and it's got loads of glowstone. <laughs> so I didn't really have to go out and look for all that glowstone. I've got 30 odd blocks of it. 30 odd powder now, so. <sighs> this, I've never seen anything like this underground, though. This is definitely a new biome that's been added, but... Ooh. Right, do you know what? Uh, I'm going to rob it of all the glowstone that's down here. Oh, that wasn't glowstone. For good measure, let's have the clay. Uh, as you can see, I have got way more stuff than I can carry. That is a very interesting find. So, let's get back to base, let's get the inventory sorted, and we'll do what we need to do next. And, yeah, a creeper just blew up and wiped out my entire inventory. Oh, excellent. Right, there we go. Yeah, a creeper just took me from pretty much full health to dead in an instant. That was not a good place to be at. Right. Okay, let's get this sorted back in a moment. Right, so let's get over here. Let's mark out our territory. Is there a skeleton in there? Whoa, there is Mario. And he is tough. Okay. I mean, he's stuck, so this is just going to be cheese, but. Uh, hurts but yeah so once we've got rid of Mario here uh, we're going to mark out the chunk that we're going to build in and start deciding what materials we want let's have a look netherite leggings oh wow that's uh, oh that that I, I need to find a way to repair them first but that's a great thing that's netherite armor as well I'm sure it is. Uh, 8 3. That's netherite armour with feather falling in a cultivation. version. Which, uh, uh, um, yeah, I'm saving those. I need to find more mods that's got names and kill them all. Um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of all this sand because uh, I do want to sell her in my base. But I like the idea of having this as like a, a runoff. Into the lake, yeah, does mean I'm basically polluting the lake. But we're all going to use as little machinery as possible that uses carpool chemicals. We're generally going to be using solar and steam and maybe a nuclear reactor at some point. But we'll like, no, we'll, we'll deal with that later on. Uh, first things first, we need to mark out the chunks. So I've marked the territory on my map here, but if you hit F9... And hit F9 again, you get these chunk boundary lines. 
So we know inside corner that is the edge of that chunk. That is the edge of that chunk. And here. All in all, nice to find. They're the uh, centre four squares. So we've got that. That. Uh, that. And that. Those are the places I'm going to put my feral lanterns to start with. I could put them here. Which I think I will eventually move them out that far. Uh, but for now, just want to get them in place. So to make our feral lanterns, let's get the recipe up on here, we need two gold, a glowstone, two glass. Well, as we go from here, we have plenty of glass. And as we now know, we have plenty of glowstones. We need four blocks, so that's 16. And then we need gold, which we've got plenty of there. So let's make our four of these. Now, in the same F functions that you've got here, F7 is a really useful one. These yellow crosses on the ground means somewhere where mobs can spawn at night. If it's a red cross, mobs can spawn no matter the time of day. And if it's blank, like that, mobs cannot spawn. Now, my potato of a PC does not like me having this on and to moving about at the same time. So you'll have to forgive the horrendousness. But, if you look at these yellow squares, they're going to slowly start disappearing. Look. And that area is getting wider and wider. So, as you build as well, it adapts. So if I covered an area where there is a, a phantom light source that creates this uh, illumination, it will recalculate and re-add it. Uh, and it does go below ground as well. So if I build a basement here, it will also illuminate that. And to be fair, I'm going to build uh, quite a large underground here as well for automation. But yeah, that means now this area is pretty safe from mobs or at least mobs spawning here we may get the occasional one wandering in next step to figure out what we're going to make the base out of i have got plenty of bricks can get a lot more we have got uh copious amounts of terracotta available to us uh andesite limestone marble all underground, netherrack to a degree, we can get plenty of that. What I'm thinking to start with is just going to be boring, basic wood, maybe a bit of a stone foundation with a wood floor. Um, I'm going to use the mineral logs for the floor because the planks are this wonderful blue. So we'll have a blue floor. We may build the walls out of birch because uh, we do have plenty available but we can make uh, here we are palisades which I think look pretty cool for a, a wooden wall so we may use that not for the building wall itself but to mark out the our chunks around the base so I've got like a, an outside defence. Um, yeah, I think we may go down that road. I mean, when it comes to stone bricks, uh, we could get a cobble gen going. We could make his own stone. That doesn't take much. Uh, the other thing I wanted to quickly show, if you're building tall and you don't have flight, can be quite a pain. Oh, so if I grab this knaf fibre we had over here, turn it into some string. Bamboo and string gives you scaffold. 
And this stuff is brilliant for any uh, builder that's not creative or has any sort of creative flight. Because you can build your scaffolding, jump on it like a normal block. But you can also build up, climb it like a ladder. And if I was to build, say, here, I want this to go out that way. What I can then do, if I see this block slightly lower than these, if I click this, it'll replace those furthest scaffolds with the block I've just used. So you can actually build the frame of a building with the scaffold and then start using it to replace the block so you don't have to go around and place them individually. Really handy for um, survival building or building without flight. Uh, and the best thing of all, if you build the scaffolding up and then you don't need it anymore, it breaks with a punch. Yes. So this, yeah, probably going to get a fair bit of use or we'll get something built up. Cause I do want to build fairly tall. Um, I wonder what do the spruce palisades look like? And do they link? Yes, they do. Ooh, so we could actually have this quite uh, quite interesting. Yeah, can't make mineral ones. <laughs> that's uh, oh, that's a shame. But yeah, it's gonna be a uh, gonna be rather interesting. This, so I do need to get myself a lot more in the terms of uh, resources. Um, more stone might use andesite for the foundation because uh, does make some nice blocks and we've got our stone cutter here so we can always play around with the different kind of bricks and tiles that we've got I mean, there's so many added because of things like Create, Masonry Mod, Quark. I mean, that, just like Stone Bricks, but Andesite, I think that might be our base. Uh, I'll say what we do, we might be a little clean and clinical to start with, but as it progresses, we will be changing it, upgrading it, changing the materials, making it a little bit more dynamic. Um, the one thing I do want to do before I uh, continue though, uh, seeing as we are going to be here for a while, let's just throw this in here for now, I think I want to upgrade our uh, create processor, you know what, I think I'll leave that there for now, what shall we do, ah I'll tell you what we'll do. We've got all this terracotta here. We've got all these plant pots over here. We've got plenty of iron and chests. We're going to make some botany pots. Now, these, if you ever use bonsai pots or. Uh, do, 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 how do we make these? If you ever use bonsai pots in the uh, other packs, I don't know why I've put bonsai there. Um, we could grow trees and it could automatically. Uh, siphon off all the wood and everything. Botany pots work very much similar, but instead of trees, it's any plant. And if you had a hopper, you can automate it as well. So you can just keep uh, feeding it items. You can just set it up, set it with a hopper uh, or a chest or set it with a set of storage drawers. And you've got not only your trees, but you've got your plants your weeds, your food. Food wise we are going to build a proper farm using Create but for things like kelp, for things like uh, uh, the um, Britannia flowers or just trees that I want the wood from but don't necessarily want the tree yeah, just so that I've got like a, a varied option. I mean, there's, what is it, 110 pages and there's four to each page. So you've got 440 plants that goes into here. Yeah, you could just have a field of botany 
pots and have infinite everything. Uh, so what these will get some use. What we do need is bone, which is bone meal, which comes from oh, let's pop these in here. Bone meal you get from your bones. Oh, let's throw these here. Picked up a lot of enchanted stuff on my walks as well. That can all go in there. Uh, do we have any more bones? We have nine. Now, a single bone becomes bone meal. You can get two bone meal if you put it into a pestle and mortar. Three if you're just breaking your hand. If you run it through a mill, guaranteed two, chance of a third, guarantee, uh, and you get 25% chance of white dye. We're just after the bone meal now, so we need nine for a block. So we need three per block. Uh, we can make three blocks, which means we can make three botany pots. So we'll fill that up there. We'll get our buckets. We need some water buckets as well. Uh, in fact, just so I can get the first one going. Rub this water from here. And we'll just get rid of all these. go and we'll make our first botany pot there we'll make a hopper stick them together and we have our hopping botany pot we're going to get a chest from there and we're going to get our kelp now the reason why we need so much kelp is if we Make it to blocks to make it easier. Dried kelp is used in making a lot of the create stuff. So everything from your, your uh, spouts, your uh, funnels, your belts, which is what we really need for transporting, but also transferring rotational energy a long distance. Now, there are six kelp per one. Uh, so that'll give us quite a few belts but this botany pot now what do we need in here so we need a botany pot with water so let's grab another bucket of water don't know why I keep holding jump it's just a false habit <laughs> right get back to base And for now, we'll just put it here. So we put the body pot down, get the chest underneath it, and put the water, put the kelp. And as you can see, a little progress time of the year 19 to so 20 minutes per growth. So it's not the fastest, but a 100% chance of getting between 10 and 20 kelp every 20 minutes. Passively, if I just left that to do its thing while I'm off uh, building away, chances are it'll take me a little while to just play around with designs and get things looking how I like it. So we may have uh, quite a few of these waiting for us when we come back. Uh, for now, let's chuck the rest in there. Chuck our seeds in there. Chuck our food in there. Last bone in there. So many chests, so many ways, places to put it. Be glad when it's all in one place. But there we go. So we get our dried kelp box to dried kelp into a belt. And I'll show you how this works. If we grab a couple more shafts from here. This is rotating now. If I wanted, uh, oh, go the other way. If I wanted to power something over here, rather than running a series of cogs, which further increases the stress on this system, I can just run a belt. And now that rotates there. If I was to do it from this belt, for example, so let's get that here. From there to there. And drop something on this belt transports it so with this 
we can set up a transport system that uh, can grind things up, pop them onto a belt where we can do other things. Where we could use a fan to wash crushed ore to get nuggets. So, just to show you, like I say, you've got your uh, your crushed ores, which you smelt away, gives you the uh, bars. But if you run through a wash, which is a, a fan blowing into some water, blowing onto the ore, one ore gets you 10 nuggets. Which is a little bit more than one. It's one and one ninth, with a fifty percent chance of getting five more, which is one and one sixth. So two of these gets you thirty six, thirty five nuggets, which is almost four or So you get him quite a, a, a big extra bonus than just smelting it one for one. So that will be our upgrade to this system which will then feed into a set of uh, storage drawers which will then give us everything that we need there um, obviously the problem with storage drawers is do with a draw controller and draw controllers we go quite comparators which require nether quartz and as much as I'd like to get them any other way, the only way we're getting nether quartz is going to the nether. Or washing soul sand. But again, trying to find soul sand on the surface is so hard. We do have arid sand. Ha. Huh. That's interesting that that gives you quartz because in my little uh, exploration that is arid sand. That is an arid desert. We could get nether quartz by washing arid sand. Which means we might not have to go to the nether just yet. I mean, we are going to have to go sooner rather than later, but I'd rather get a build set, a base set up, um, things in place to make it easier um, before I start going to the nether, because, uh, yeah, not a big fan. I mean, I've been killed by an elephant and a creeper in the overworld, and there is a multitude of things that are intent on killing in the nether, and I don't want to argue with them. So, for now, what I'll do between episodes, get a base built, get it all set up uh, so the next time you see it it'll be in a fully functional fully operational base uh, I might get some of that arid sand mined up as well just so that we've got it in preparation and yeah means we can get rid of this base me level this house as well so we just leave this to open ground yeah, a lot of tree cutting, a lot of digging. Um, make full use of uh, these things. And everything should start looking a little bit better. And obviously we've got this thing working away. So, yeah, for now, hit your likes, hit your subscribes, comment away. Uh, but other than that, Avicen's a good one. Take it steady. Bye-bye.